What it is, y'all. It's your boy Jones, and welcome to another episode of Jones with Sports Podcast. Today, we got a very, very special guest, happened to be in New York, and decided to come meet with me and talk about sports today. So, I hope y'all enjoy it, but before you do, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Enjoy the video. Welcome to Jones with Sports Podcast, brought to you by Jones. And today, we have a very special guest. You guys know him from the Odd Couple. He's a Fox sports analyst, and he's got great things going on, including MLBbro.com, which he's going to talk about quickly. And as, like I said, we got Rob Parker today. Rob, thanks for, for joining us today. Man, thank you. I appreciate the uh, invite. Absolutely. We've been trying to get this done for a while. You've been a supporter of Jones Sports for so long, so we appreciate you coming. Um, so first, let's talk about what you got going on. I see you got a lot of things going on, and you put, I love that you're doing it. Keep pushing it. So talk about it. Let them know what, what's going on. Yeah. It's good to be in New York back home for mm-hmm. a little vacation. I've been pumping for the last year and a half, you know, with everything. So really haven't had a lot of time to uh, relax or get a chance. But, uh, yeah, man, so many things are going on. I'm based in L.A., Fox Sports 1, Fox Sports Radio, Chris Broussard, The Odd Couple, Monday through Friday, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern. So the show's doing great. Uh, write a column a couple times a week for deadspin.com. Teaching at USC. In fact, uh, summer school, this is the last week of summer school I'm teaching there. That's awesome. Teaching a 21st century sports writing, which is a great class. Yes, um, and then my big project that I've been working on for the last 10, 11 weeks, uh, MLBbro.com, where we cover black, brown, major leaguers. And uh, if you haven't checked out the site, you have to check it out. Some great content, some written stuff, some videos. It's catching on, man. The players are starting to recognize it. The black players in the league and Major League Baseball loves the site. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. I'm one of the few black guys who have a baseball Hall of Fame vote. Mm-hmm. I've had a baseball writer's card, the BBWAA, since 1990. We're talking about over 30 years now. Um, I'm a proud member of that organization, and uh, our tradition and, and history and involvement is, in baseball is huge. I mean, sometimes it, it bothers me that, you know, like where we are now and these uh, coaches and AAU coaches are t- talking kids out of talk, playing baseball and only want them to play one sport. And you look in the record books and look at baseball history, Baseball is our game. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, how could you not think baseball is our game? We got Hank Aaron and Willie Mays, Ken Griffey Jr., and Some Barry greatest. Bonds. Come on, man. You know, yeah, like, the list goes on. The list goes on. <laughs> you know, how in the world could we not play this game when we've excelled at it? Remember, we didn't even start till 1947 in the big leagues. Mm-hmm. We've rewritten the record. So I'm glad that more kids are. We're seeing younger and younger black stars in baseball, some great ones. Pookie Betts, of course. You know, Tim Anderson with the White Sox, Judge, Giancarlo Stanton with the Yankees. And the list goes on and on. And Kate Key Bryant, and Hayes, and Pittsburgh. Uh, so they're coming. And maybe we took a little dip, but we're, we're on our way back. <laughs> but please check out the site, MLBBroBRO.com. Absolutely. Uh, we're definitely going to check it out. You guys are going to see it on my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So make sure you guys click on that link. I will po- be definitely posting that. Um, so what what really pushed you to go and get into this avenue of MLB, bro? I just thought there was a boy, you know, like maybe uh, black and brown people don't go directly to MLB.com, which is a great site. They cover baseball top to bottom. Yep. But it's like ESPN has, uh, ultimately, I hope that MLB Bro becomes a side piece mm. to MLB.com. Right. The same way undefeated is to ESPN.com. Yeah. You might not go to ESPN.com, but you might go to undefeated, mm-hmm. which takes you to the main site. Exactly. So that's really where MLB Bro becomes. It's it's a complementary site to a mm. bigger site. Right. Um, and we focused in. There's so many great stories. And uh, you can really keep up with who's in the game, uh, you know, and who's doing stuff. There's a lot of players that we highlight and Absolutely. and talk about that you don't know 
mm-hmm. because they're on teams. They might not be the biggest stars, right. but they're contributing. They're playing. They're they're making plays. Yep. So we're highlighting those guys. You have a lot of good little features called like a, a bro you need to know. Where we'll take a look at a player from the past. I did one about Dwight Good mm-hmm. for the Mets. Yep. Obviously, Cecil Fielder mm-hmm. played for the Tigers and the Yankees. Barry Larkin, a Hall of Fame shortstop, who I covered in Cincinnati. I was the first African American beat writer to cover the Cincinnati Reds. Awesome. And then think about Cincinnati. That was the very first professional sports team in this country. Mm. So it has a long tradition. Yeah. And uh, so we have stuff like that. We have other features called Black in the Day, where we look at things that yeah, happened. Yeah, I, I love that. In, in, in the past. But we also, it's like 25% past and 75% of modern players. And so we, we really cover it. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a smorgasbord of, <laughs> of stuff. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's awesome. Man. Keep doing it. Like I said, you guys will be seeing that on my social media. So make sure you look out for that. Um, keeping it in baseball. You're a big Mets fan. How are you feeling about the Mets right now? Well, I mean, I grew up as a Mets fan, growing up in Jamaica, Queens. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't have the fandom that I usually have, <laughs> but um, they're pitching. They got great pitching. They got mm-hmm. two brothers, of course, along with the Grom and the pitching staff. Their pitching has been outstanding. Mm-hmm. Walker, of course, Strowman have been yeah, they've outstanding. Been... They've been doing their thing. So they got a lot of pitching. Like, you look at the line, and now, you know, uh, Francisco Lindor is uh, finally. So finally hitting. Coming you around. knew he was going to hit. Yeah, something. it took a while, but he got People there. were, like, panicking. They gave him 300 <laughs> something million dollars. Like, oh, my God, he's going to I was one of them. <laughs> right. He, he was all right in Cleveland, but he can't handle New York. And mm-hmm. he's a really good player. Yes. And he'll get there. The new owner, I give him Cohen, is serious about turning the Mets around and stop treating the Mets like they're a, a mid-level market. They're in New York. They got right. money. They exactly. should spend it and go get good players and pack up, pack out City Field. Absolutely. Um, so going back to, uh, you know, Black history and baseball, what are your thoughts on, you know, like you said, it, it took a dip in – you know, as many black players in MLB. What do you think we got to do in order to get that back to Well, they, they, they've made steps. I mean, they've had all these programs, RBI and all that, and you're starting to see the, the fruits of that labor. You know what I mean? Like, guys are coming up. They're in the minor league. People don't know, but they're on their way. We're seeing start more and more stars. You know, um, I, I, you know, I don't know what the exact numbers are going to be, but but definitely, it, it's it's on an increase, not a decrease. Okay. We've seen some other pitchers in college and players in college who are on their way as right. well. So I, I think uh, baseball has – you reap what you sow. And right. at one point for, for 15 or 20 years, baseball invested in Latin America. So mm-hmm. if you're planting seeds there, what players are you going to get? You're going to get Latin America Absolutely. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. That's how it works. So – um, yeah, and now I think they've invested uh, in the black community, got all these camps. And, and, and then the other thing I saw a couple of years ago, it was two years ago, the uh, College World Series when Michigan played, mm-hmm. and uh, they had eight black players on their team. They might have had as many black players on their baseball team as they had <laughs> on their basketball team at Michigan. Because eight is a lot. That is. That and is. they had eight guys. And I remember the interview with them coach of Michigan and he said he just started he decided he was going to look for players elsewhere because the, the biggest thing today is these showcases mm. and you got to go play in these tournaments and cost a thousand dollars for the weekend to be able to play in these so you eliminate wow. a lot of Absolutely. players who don't have a thousand dollars for the weekend to play in these showcases and this is where the scouts and the coaches right where they're and all, all be folks, they all show up mm-hmm. kind of like the the AAU search, yep. you know, it's become such a money-driven thing. And if you don't have capital, you can't get in on the on, on that system and how players are developed and mm-hmm. seen and whatnot. So I think baseball understands that. Coaches like the coach at Michigan said, I'm not just going to look for players there. I'm going to look elsewhere because maybe there's some good players and they just aren't at the show. Exactly. You could be missing out on a lot, talent, of, so. a lot of talent. So absolutely. I think that's great. That they're doing that, and they, it's, they just got to keep pushing it, and we'll start seeing an increase. Um, I don't think so. One last question. We'll switch it over to basketball because right now we're in the playoffs. What are your thoughts on 
the conference finals in the West and East? Well, I originally picked Brooklyn against the Clippers in the finals. Obviously, Brooklyn, you know, unfortunate. But they just couldn't stay, you know, help. I mean, that, that, I still think that's the most unbelievable thing that, you know, in the second round against Milwaukee, mm-hmm. Harden gets hurt 43 seconds in. He gave a valiant effort. He obviously was hobbled yeah. in game seven. Uh, Durant played his butt off, couldn't play any better. And then they lose Kyrie. Yeah, that's that's. If they tough. had their whole squad, they would be going to the finals. Absolutely. It's tough to swallow. Milwaukee's on their way <laughs> against Atlanta. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know how how excited people are going to be. <laughs> that's cool. It is what it is, but you know what yeah. I'm saying, but. But it's just a shame that we didn't get to see it. You know, mm-hmm. like, you want to see the players You healthy. absolutely do. You and want to see the best. You want to see the best players play, and, and that's the bad part. Mm-hmm. Um, in the West, I picked the Clippers. And if they had Kawhi, I would definitely believe that they were going to the finals. They lost game one. Game mm-hmm. two was tonight. I still think uh, if Kawhi can – I don't know what the status is. It's kind of vague. They haven't totally ruled them out. They've right. ruled them out game by game. Yep. But uh, and then Ty Lue has done a great job. Absolutely. A great job. So He doesn't get the, the credit he deserves. No. You know, whenever you coach LeBron and they win a championship, they act like you didn't have anything to do with it. Right. But we're seeing the difference between the Clippers last year, that show against yep. Denver, and this team, like, the only team in history to come back from 2-0 deficits uh, in, in two series in the, in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible. They were down 2-0 to Dallas. And remember, they lost the first two games at home. Yep. They were down 2-0 to Utah. Everybody down counted them out. Yep. They're down 1-0 to the Suns. I'm just telling you, don't count this team yeah. out. And if somehow they can steal game two in Phoenix, because I, I think Chris Paul is still out, they mm-hmm. were able to steal it. It could change the whole series. So I'm not counting out the Clippers yet. And if Kawhi were to come back, I give them a great chance. But now we get to the finals, and maybe even win a championship. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Rob, thank you for joining us on Jones Sports. I just want to say uh, you've always been a great person. You've always looked out for Jones Sports, and we appreciate that. And good luck with everything you, you got going forward. Well, good appreciate luck to you. you. And, and uh, you know, keep striving, keep, you know, putting in the work. And this is the way you build up yourself in order to put yourself in the position that you want. And um, I was just a nine year old kid growing up in Jamaica, Queens. All I ever wanted to be was a sports writer for the Daily News. That was my childhood dream. All my <laughs> friends wanted to be cops and lawyers and doctors. And I was like this skinny black kid <laughs> who loved baseball saying, I want to have my own column in the newspaper. That's awesome. That's Dreams awesome. do come true. They do. They sure do. Thank you again. And make sure you guys go look at MLBbro.com. It will be on every social media platform that you see on Jones Sports.